three anthem-like sentences from the pages of Janet Malcolm. She writes in two lives her upending double portrait of Gertrude Stein and Alice Toklas. The instability of human knowledge is one of our few certainties. In Iphigenia and Forest Hills, her most recent book, The Anatomization of a Murder for Hire Trial, she says, we go through life mishearing and misseeing and misunderstanding so that the stories we tell ourselves will add up. And in The Crime of Sheila McGaw, an earlier dissection of the inner lining of a court case, she puts it like this. The truth is messy, incoherent, aimless, boring, absurd. <laughs> the truth does not make a good story. That is why we have art. <laughs> the razor keen, skeptical voice in these three sentences is by now unmistakable and justly renowned. And we can't do without it. And when the silent woman, Janet Malcolm's account of the Sylvia Plath, Ted Hughes epic, appeared 17 years ago, a wide range of writing professionals, biographers especially, felt injured where they lived. Today, The Silent Woman is a book no sensible person embarks on a biographical project without reading. The bracing storylessness of human life, as she calls it, now haunts every attempt to assemble the facts into a narrative call this the Malcolm Effect. The fundamental problem of omniscient narration in nonfiction has been her theme, which does not inhibit her from being vastly entertaining, dramatically spot on, or from keeping a sharp eye out for the absurd. Many of you here have read her momentous fourth book, The Journalist and the Murderer, in which there is the following exchange between herself and Mr. Daniel Kornstein, one of journalist Jeffrey McDonald's lawyers. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, um, Joe McGinnis's, uh, pardon me, Joe McGinnis's lawyers. Kornstein said he would consider my request and let me know. The request is that she be allowed to consult the records of the case in his office rather than the office of the other lawyer on the other coast. Suddenly, he said, do you know anything about me? I looked at him with interest and thought, now all will be explained. <laughs> this is going to be one of those moments of revelation when the beggar discloses that he is the prince. <laughs> I am Vanessa Redgrave's lawyer. <laughs> I represented her in her suit against the Boston Symphony. It was time to go. <laughs> Will you let me know if I can read those documents here, I asked. I'll give you my phone number. No, no, I have it, Kornstein said, shuffling through papers on his desk. I have dozens of pieces of paper with your phone number on them. I know your number by heart. <laughs> and then, bitterly, comically, he recited it. <laughs> he presented me with two books he had written. Thinking Under Fire, Great courtroom lawyers and their impact on American history. <laughs> and the music of the laws. They politely escorted me to the door. I never heard from him again. <laughs> the journalist and the murderer was, of course, virulently denounced upon its parents in 1990 and is today, now that the times have caught on and caught up, required reading all the J schools and all the nonfiction writing programs, Janet Malcolm is the conscience of her trade. 
It's my great honor to present her with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you. 